episode 37. Everyone laughed quietly. It can't be, said Montag. It is, replied Granger, smiling. We're book burners, too. We read the books and burnt them, afraid they'd be found. Microfilming didn't pay off. We were always traveling. We didn't want to bury the film and come back later, always the chance of discovery. Better to keep it in the old heads where no one can see it or suspect it. We are all bits and pieces of history and literature and international law. Byron, Tom Paine, Machiavelli, or Christ, it's here. And the hour is late. And the war's begun. And we are out here, and the city is there, all wrapped up in its own coat of a thousand colors. What do you think, Montag? I think I was blind trying to do things my way, planting books in firemen's houses and sending in alarms. You did what you had to do. Carried out on a national scale, it might have worked beautifully. But our way is simpler, and we think better. All we want to do is keep the knowledge we think we will need intact and safe. We're not out to incite or anger anyone yet. For if we are destroyed, the knowledge is dead, perhaps for good. We are model citizens in our own special way. We walk the old tracks. We lie in the hills at night, and the city people let us be. We're stopped and searched occasionally, but there's nothing on our persons to incriminate us. The organization is flexible, very loose and fragmentary. Some of us have had plastic surgery on our faces and fingerprints. Right now we have a horrible job. We're waiting for the war to begin and as quickly end. It's not pleasant, but then we're not in control. We're the odd minority crying in the wilderness. When the war's over, perhaps we can be of some use in the world. Do you really think they'll listen then? If not, we'll just have to wait. We'll pass the books on to our children by word of mouth and let our children wait in turn on the other people. A lot will be lost that way, of course. But you can't make people listen. They have to come round in their own time, wondering what happened and why the world blew up under them. It can't last. How many of you are there? Thousands on the roads, the abandoned railroad tracks. Tonight, bums on the outside, libraries inside. It wasn't planned at first. Each one had a book he wanted to remember and did. Then, over a period of 20 years or so, we met each other, traveling, and got the loose network together and set out a plan. The most important single thing we had to pound into ourselves was that we were not important. We mustn't be pedants. We were not to feel superior to anyone else in the world. We're nothing more than dust jackets for books, of no significance otherwise. Some of us live in small towns. Chapter 1 of Thoreau's Walden in Green River. Chapter 2 in Willow Farm, Maine. Oh, there's one town in Maryland, only 27 people. No bomb will ever touch that town. There is the complete essays of a man named Bertrand Russell. 
pick up that town almost and flip the pages, so many pages to a person. And when the war's over, some day, some year, the books can be written again. The people will be called in one by one to recite what they know, and we'll set it up in type until another dark age, when we might have to do the whole damn thing over again. But that's the wonderful thing about man. He never gets so discouraged or disgusted that he gives up doing it all over again because he knows very well it is important and worth the doing. What do we do tonight? asked Montag. Wait, said Granger. And move downstream a little way just in case. He began throwing dust and dirt on the fire. The other men helped, and Montag helped, and there, in the wilderness, the men all moved their hands, putting out the fire together. They stood by the river in the starlight. Montag saw the luminous dial of his waterproof. Five. Five o'clock in the morning, Another year ticked by in a single hour, and dawn waiting beyond the far bank of the river. Why do you trust me, said Montag. A man moved in the darkness. The look of you is enough. You haven't seen yourself in a mirror lately. <laughs> beyond that, the city has never cared so much about us to bother with an elaborate chase like this to find us. A few crackpots with verses in their heads can't touch them, and they know it, and we know it, everyone knows it. So long as the vast population doesn't wander about quoting the Magna Carta and the Constitution, it's all right. The firemen were enough to check that now and then. Now, the cities don't bother us, and you look like hell. They moved along the bank of the river, going south. Montag tried to see the men's faces, the old faces he remembered from the firelight, lined and tired. He was looking for a brightness, a resolve, a triumph over tomorrow that hardly seemed to be there. Perhaps he had expected their faces to burn and glitter with the knowledge they carried, to glow as lanterns glow with the light in them. But all the light had come from the campfire, and these men had seemed no different from any others who had run a long race, searched a long search, seen good things destroyed, and now, very late, were gathering to wait for the end of the party and the blowing out of the lamps. They weren't at all certain that the things they carried in their heads might make every future dawn glow in a purer light. They were sure of nothing save that the books were on file behind their quiet eyes. The books were waiting with their pages uncut for the customers who might come by in later years, some with clean and some with dirty fingers. Montag squinted from one face to another as they walked. Don't judge a book by its cover, someone said, and they all laughed quietly, moving downstream. There was a shriek and the jets from the city were gone overhead long before the men looked up. Montag stared back at the city, far down the river, only a faint glow now.